Hey everyone, this is Kendrick Coleman from KendrickColeman.com. Over the past few weeks, I've been playing around with the vSphere 5.1 beta, and namely I've been playing around with the vCenter Server Virtual Appliance and the vSphere Web Client. Really, these are the two new things that I really see as a really big release within 5.1 because they've made a lot of improvements into it, not only in the UI, but also with the features and the compatibilities that, that go into them. So this first video, and really we're going through a few tutorial series, this first video is going to be really about how to deploy the vCenter virtual appliance. And after that, we're going to start digging into the vSphere web client and how we configure a lot of things in there. So before we get started, let's go ahead and let's talk about some of the prerequisites that have to be met before you deploy the vCenter server virtual appliance. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our AD server. Really, this can't, doesn't have to be your AD server, but it can be your DNS server. So within AD, as you can see right here, I don't have the vCenter virtual appliance added yet because this is what's going to happen when we start doing it through the, through the wizard. Now, when we go down here and we go to our actual DNS entries, you need to actually create an existing DNS entry for whatever you want to call it. So right now, I'm going to call this vCenter5195, and this is going to relate to 192.168.50.195. The reason you have to do this is just because it, it needs it to be able to talk to AD for some reason. I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but that's why. Another thing you have to make sure is you have to create a, ver a reverse lookup zone for whatever subnet it's going to be in. As you can see, this is 50. You know, sorry, 192.168.50, and you have to create the reverse lookup zone for it. To create a ver reverse lookup zone is actually pretty easy. You just click, right click, new zone, next, 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 next. And then we're going to come in and we'll say we'll create it for 192.168.40, right? So we'll click next, 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 and finish. And as you can see, it kind of populates it in this reverse order. It's, you know, it's a little bit different, but that's exactly what you have to do. So when you're in here, you will see over time, if you do have servers and everything like that in that, D sorry, in that, subnet, in that subnet zone, they will start populating themselves in here. So we'll go ahead and we'll delete that because I don't really need it. But make sure you do have this before you start creating your vCenter server virtual appliance. So now that we're ready to go, we'll go in here. I'll start deploying it from the OVF template. It's actually a very simple thing to do. You download the OVA from your download site. Just go ahead and click it. We'll click open, click next. Once it's in here, it's just kind of the same thing we've already seen when you, when you deploy an OVA. Um, I'm going to change this because I don't like it to have all these spaces in here because it's just something that I, I always have done. So I'll just say VCV, VC, v, VCVA5195. So that's what I want to call it. And I will put this down here in VCR51. And I will add it to my main shuttle cluster. And I will add it to the vCenter51 V app. Now, when I create a storage profile, this isn't necessary. Of course, I'm just doing this for my own intensive purposes inside of my own home lab here. Go ahead and click next, next, next. And I'm going to put it on my server's network. So go ahead and click next. And I'm going to create my default gateway, which is here. I'm going to add my DNS server. Of course, you can just create another comma if you need to. Of course, I only have one, so that's all I have to worry about. Now, of course, I said this is going to be 195, and my network mask is just a simple 24-bit subnet mask. Go ahead and click Next, and we'll click Finish, and I will be back to you in a second while this... All right, now that we have our vCenter Server Virtual Appliance deployed, now if you have the RAM available in your environment, you can go ahead and keep it on. As you can see, once it's configured, it starts off with eight gigs of RAM. Now, I found out from my testing that two's not enough, three's pushing it, but four, on the other hand, is really a good spot because you you have a you have a chance to actually run a lot of the services now. So when I do this, I actually change this to four gigs of RAM before I actually go ahead and do it. And for a small environment where I'm just testing this with two nested ESXs, that's all I really need. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and just power it on. And we can watch the startup happen. Uh, of course, you can watch it. I'm not going to bore you by making it happen. So I'm going to go ahead and pause. And once your VM is all the way up, you should get a blue screen like this, where it's going to tell you to open up a browser. And you have to remember this. You have to go to port 5480. So when you do that, this is really where it's all going to start beginning and we're going to start doing the configuration. So when we do this, let's go ahead and we'll go to HTTPS then type in the address of your appliance and make sure you do colon 5480 and we'll click OK 
And you're gonna get, of course, this regular SSL certificate, continue this website nonsense. And when we do this, your username is gonna be root and your password is VMware, all lowercase. That's always gonna be your default username and password. Now, when we come in here, there's a few things that you have to take in consideration because I did this probably 45 times and always had different kinds of problems. But now, now I figured out the exact solution, the exact routine you have to do this to be able to get to install correctly. So we're going to go ahead and we'll click next to accept the EULA. Now this is going to take about a minute. So I'm now that the EULA is accepted, we get to this next screen that talks about configuring the options. I don't want to do this yet. I want to go ahead and cancel out because there's a few things that I want to do before I do that. And the first thing I do, as soon as I cancel out, I don't want to go start clicking around because for some reason it just borks up and messes up. So I go ahead and I'm just going to log out, refresh it, log back in as root and VMware, and then I'm going to log back in. And the first thing I want to do is I actually want to change the address. Remember that, that name we set up with an Active Directory before? This is where I want to put it in. So I'll put vcenter5195.kendrickcoleman.com. Oh, C0M, because that's what I do locally. I'm going to click Save Settings. Now I'm going to go ahead and save these settings. And next, I want to go to the System tab, and I want to change the time zone. This time zone is probably going to be what you have wherever. Of course, since this is all going to be Linux-based, it actually has a Kentucky and Louisville, where I live, settings. So that's what I always choose. And then over here, I want to go to the Admin Portal, and I do want to change the password. So I'm going to put VMware as the current. And I'm going to put my secret password in here. And I'm going to click Change Password. And the operation was successful. As you can see, you, got, you can also toggle SSH settings if you want to be able to SSH into the box. I consider that you would probably keep SSH enabled um, unless you really want to shut it down. SSH, when you log into it, you do have command line utilities to be able to start troubleshooting a lot of stuff, which you really don't get with the Windows version of vCenter. So it's kind of cool. And then, so we're going to go ahead and we'll log out again. We, we will refresh it. Now that we're back in, we will type in root. We will type in our new secret password. We will click log in. Now, as you can see, we actually have these two services running. It doesn't matter. They're fine. But we're going to go ahead, go back to the setup wizard, and we're going to click launch. Now, when we go here, I'm going to set my custom configuration. Because if I go default settings, it's going to configure the database and the SSO with default settings but it's not going to actually configure Active Directory and one thing you want to do is actually have Active Directory configured before you do database and SSO settings because if you don't then it's going to start reverting back to what it was setting before I think it might have been a bug with beta but like I said this is what I found out to actually work so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to choose embedded and actually I should probably take a note and mention this before we do this so when you're actually in here, you go to the vCenter and then you actually go to the services tab. Now, the services tab is where you need to start really taking into consideration a lot of the stuff before you actually configure it all. So right here in the inventory size, this is where you want to change it to small, medium, large, depending on what your actual hosts look like, right? You know, 400 hosts, 4,000 VMs, somewhere in the mediums between there. But of course, I'm only going to have two nested ESX hosts, so I just need small. And remember that you need to change the amount of RAM for the type of inventory, how big you actually need it to be. And of course, you can actually change the repository size for your auto deploy and your, your dump collector as well. And you can save these settings. So we'll go back. So this is that's something you would want to do before you actually do the configuration. So we'll go ahead, launch. So we'll do set, set custom configuration, next, database type. We'll do embedded because you don't really have an Oracle and it can't really take SQL. And embedded's fine. That's what we want to do because we keep this nice and simple and everything in its own uh, via. So this is going to take a minute to test and save. Okay. Now next is the SSO part, which is the single sign-on server. And this is where we're also going to keep it in embedded pieces as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll click next. Let that go. And then we're going to have to go ahead and enable Active Directory. So we add our Active Directory domain. Now when you add the embedded user, it's a little bit different. You have to do it as such. You have to add the user Sorry, I totally did that wrong. User at the, I can't even type today, at your domain. Then you type in your password and then click next. And we'll go ahead and we'll click start. Now it's going to take a few minutes for it to configure Active Directory, do its database, and then to configure the sign-on server and then start all the services. So once we we'll do that. All right, now that we actually have our vCenter server setup completed, we'll go ahead and click close.
And as you can see, all the services are going to start coming up and running. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and we'll click Start for the Auto Deploy service because there's always like an error that comes up within the vCenter. Uh, sorry, the vSphere client wizard, or sorry, the vSphere web client, if it's not running. So we'll go ahead and we have that. Next, what we want to do is we actually want to go ahead and upload some sysprep. If you don't have sysprep files already handy on you, what you can do is you can navigate over to my website at kindercolman.com and look for the VM Advanced ISO tab. This will actually bring you to an ISO that has a bunch of stuff that you can do. And of course, one thing that I do is that I have vCenter sysprep files on here. So go ahead, you can download it right now. It's at version 0 0.7. And then what you can do is you can just mount it to whatever you know, virtual machine or server you're running, anything like that. Of course, I'll go ahead and I mounted it to this VM that I'm running on here because I am connecting to a, a view desktop. So we'll go ahead and we'll upload some sysprep files. So what I want to do is I need to just start uploading. So I'll go ahead and I'll browse here and I'll go to my VM advanced ISO image down here at the DVD. And I will go to the sysprep files. I will go to the vCenter sysprep. And as you can see, it has all these different things. So what you want to do is you want to be able to match these up. So XP, of course, goes to XP, 2K to 2K, uh, XP64, XP64, and so on. So go ahead and we just go ahead. And what you have to do is, you know, it's actually not the best way to do it. Is you actually have to click every single file and click on upload. So you just do this. You got you to gotta just choose every file all the way down. And then it'll end up starting to deploy. So go ahead and do that. It'll probably take a few minutes. And then I will see you back here in a second. All right, now that we actually have all of our sysprep files uploaded, we'll go ahead and click close. And what we want to do is we actually want to go to the system. And we actually want to reboot the VCVA now. So we'll go ahead and reboot it. And we'll give it a few minutes to come up. You can actually just watch it on your screen over here. And you can see actually when it comes up to this blue screen. And when it's back up to the blue screen, we'll start over again. So now, as we can see, we're already back up with the blue screen. We can come back over here. We can refresh this page. We'll go ahead and leave it. Refresh it one more time for good measure. Root, my secret password. Now we come in here and we can see that all the services will be running. Now, the one good thing that I really like about this is that you have your database, your single sign-on server, your, your web client, log browser, dump collector, syslog, auto-deploy, all these services running in a single place. The only thing, if you, if you haven't noticed yet, the only thing that isn't in here is your update manager. Your update manager service still has to be on a regular old Windows box. So you will have to go ahead and you will have to do that. Um, but we'll go ahead and we'll do that at some other point, probably not in this tutorial series. But as you can see right now, we have everything configured and ready to go. So that's the end of this first lesson. So I will let you go and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.